W5. They promise carefree golden years. Welcome to a new beginning. But some families think otherwise, claiming neglect, bed sores, poor nutrition, and understaffing. That is pathetic. Now, a call for change. They were never doing their job as far as I'm concerned. Sandy Ronaldo reveals a groundbreaking legal action. Were you angry? I'm still angry. Claims of profit over care. It was all about acquiring real estate. Are met with defiance and denial. Canadian legal system has let these people down. As long-suffering families fight to get the care their loved ones were promised. No one deserves to die like that. And hailed as a miracle worker. He promised to help them have children. Hi, big brother. But delivered heartbreak. I mean, I was horrified. Avery Haynes investigates a respected fertility doctor with a dark secret. How many brothers and sisters do you have? There are 11 of us. Decades of trust crumble. There were most likely others. I don't think this is something you do once. Strangers are drawn together by a doctor's deceit. I think it is a huge violation. And families struggle to stay together. He's still my dad. He's always been my dad. After learning the terrible truth. Those children are not their biological children. Here is Kevin Newman. Hello and thanks for joining us. There are places of care with often pleasant sounding names like Hillside Manor or Harmony Hills. But more than 200 families are about to launch an unprecedented lawsuit alleging the quality of care their loved ones received didn't live up to billing in Canada's top three for profit nursing home chains. Sandy Ronaldo continues her groundbreaking reporting into seniors care with new allegations of putting profit before people. A Saturday morning at a hotel conference room in North Toronto. Make it your name. These people are strangers to one another, but they're here because they all have one thing in common. Dozens of families who claim the nursing homes they paid to care for their loved ones failed them miserably, and they want those homes held accountable. I am here because to bring about change. Um, the nursing homes really do need a big change um, in care. I don't know if it's man at the management level or where there is a lack of proper care. This is about you folks and your parents. This meeting has been arranged by the Nursing Home Action Coalition. Lawyers getting ready to launch an unprecedented lawsuit in Canada against three of this country's biggest for-profit nursing home chains, Rivera, Extendicare, and Siena, homes they claim failed to deliver the care families were promised. Every day my heart breaks remembering my father's suffering a long, agonizing death. Emotions run high. You can feel the anguish, the pain, and the anger. Atrocities are so difficult to talk about. But the reality is even more difficult for the victims lying and dying from these unacceptable offenses. Frances York's mother, Margaret, was a resident in an extended care home. Your mom was a homemaker? Yes. Yep. And you grew up in a big family, rambunctious. Yep. A lot of kids. Yes. The house was always busy with kids, busy all the time. Now here she looks quite dapper. It must be Canada Day. That was Canada Day last year. For years after their father died, Frances and her family were able to care for their mom. But after she suffered a stroke and ended up in a wheelchair, they simply couldn't manage on their own. Margaret came to live here at the Craig Lee Nursing Home. Which is just around the corner from me. Everything seemed okay for the first three weeks to a month, and then it slowly started to show its true colors. What started to happen? When I would go in, she'd always be wet because she was incontinent, she was in diapers. Um, she was always wet and dirty. To me, they didn't keep the place very clean because there was a cockroach in bed with my mom and that wasn't the only one I'd ever seen. There was quite a lot. You know, there was cockroaches all over the room. Shocked by what she saw, upset and angry, Frances began to document what she believes was neglect and abuse taking pictures of bruises, cuts, and sores staff couldn't explain. 
These are her legs. The one nurse told me that she did that. She did that getting in and out of the bathtub. But my mom couldn't walk. And underneath these are cuts. And they have, you see the clearness? Those are, it, it's like shrink wrap on her to hold her skin together because it's so bad. Determined to find out what was really going on, she started dropping in on her mom at different times, surprise visits. And when you showed up unexpectedly, did you ever find her in a situation that worried you? Yes. For example? Uh, one time when I showed up, I went in and my mom was rolled into a corner facing the wall, crying. So I went to the nurse's station as I had many, many times. They were never happy to see me because I always had a complaint because they were never doing their job as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you're describing a horrible scene to me. So how do you rationalize in your mind? How do you explain why they treated your mom the way they did? I believe it's just they're so used to just mistreating people. I don't even think they gave it a second thought. They just, they just, it wasn't just my mother. I, know, I witnessed it with many other people. Do you think it's because they're short-staffed? Yes. Do you think because they don't have enough training to deal with people who have the kind of illnesses or situation that your mom found herself in? Definitely. Frances says her mom kept getting urinary tract infections, but staff didn't care or listen. I had many meetings with the team telling them, my mother has a urinary tract infection. I smell it. They would tell me, you can't smell that. Are you a professional? I said, nope, but I can tell you I, I smell it. Then one night, Frances got a call from the nursing home saying her mom had a high fever, was on oxygen, and should they call an ambulance? I said, yes. Please call the ambulance right now. I will be right there. When the paramedics arrived, one female medic made a diagnosis. She said, she has a urinary tract infection. I said, how do you know that? And she said, I smell it. And I said, well, you're the first person that I can say that agrees with me. That was the beginning of the end. Margaret never made it out of the hospital. Her lungs collapsed and she died. What did they list as the cause of death? pneumonia and urinary tract infection. When your mom passed away, you start to look back at everything that happened. Is there anything that you would have done differently? Um, yeah, I probably would never again put anyone I love in a home. Even though she was 91. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't have died. She still had lots of life left in her but it was due to neglect that she's no longer here. This is not a typical uh, kind of lawsuit. It was stories like this that caught the attention of lawyer Amani Oakley, whose specialty is malpractice suits. Her office was inundated with calls from families looking for help, all with similar horrific stories of neglect and mistreatment. Falling, bed sores, poor nutrition, medication, errors, lack of turning people. Common theme throughout. Very, yeah. So what can I do to pull all these people together and make it a group thing as opposed to each person having to fight their own battle? We've been all involved with class actions before. Representing more than 200 families, Oakley plans to sue this country's three biggest for-profit nursing home chains. They're taking on Extendicare, a public company with revenues of a billion dollars a year from all sources, which includes 96 long-term care homes across Canada. Privately owned Rivera operates 73 homes, but doesn't report financial data. And Siena Senior Living has operating revenues of more than $500 million a year, which includes 45 long-term care homes. Oakley says her clients may have tried to complain about lack of care, but those concerns were often dismissed. So you end up with situations, and I heard about them, it just makes my blood boil, where people would say to me that the CEO or the head of the nursing home would say to the family, go ahead, try to find a lawyer. So there was this, they knew lawyers weren't taking this. So they were very cocky in their belief that people would not find, no matter how angry and upset they were, would not find a lawyer that would be able to help them. So I want to be able to plug that hole. 
I don't think it's right. You want to be able to help them. Absolutely. I think that um, I think the Canadian legal system has let these people down. I have a very strong belief in the jury system, and I believe juries will not accept an argument that says grandma isn't worth anything because she passed away and her suffering isn't worth much because she's dead now. And that seems to be the, you know, what they're counting on, I think. This lawyer is on a mission to hold the nursing homes accountable. As far as I am aware, there have only been four cases in all of Canada that have gone to trial for nursing homes. That is pathetic. You can't build a legacy of awards from the courts on four cases. So we now have built this giant group that um, when they move forward, instead of one at a time, you're going to have a court that, that will be focused, more inundated on what the families are telling them. What's in it for you? I think, you know, I went into law to help people. The number of people out there with these awful, horrific, gruesome stories, it, it rips my heart. And I feel almost um, inhuman sometimes having to call people and tell them I can't help. You're taking this personally. It's very difficult to tell a loved one who suffered, seeing what their mom or dad has gone through, that, that the legal system isn't there for them. A lucrative for-profit care system. You've got all sorts of problems. But at what cost? What did they say was wrong with her? Starvation. When W5 continues. For-profit nursing home chains in the business of caring for vulnerable seniors at the end of their lives. Companies the families claim took their money along with government funding but didn't spend it sufficiently on the safe, compassionate care they promised. And that is why more than 200 family members like Frances York intend to sue them. I'm determined to make a difference because what they did was wrong. And they need to change it because there's so many other people that are gonna suffer from this if they don't make a change. Betty McTay agrees something has to change. These people are making their money. The government kicks in so much, the patients are paying so much, and the patients that are in there are not getting their needs met. These homes cannot be allowed to operate the way they're currently operating. Betty's mother, Edna, was paying $3,700 a month to live in an extended care nursing home. The $3,700 a month was supposed to go for what? For her food, her meals, her, her care, um, her diapers, her laundry, all her needs that she needed to have met while she was in there, and it didn't. And where, so where do you think the money went? It's a lot of money. Oh, I think it went to the administrators. I think it went to the owners. It certainly didn't go into the nursing staff in the, in the trenches, as I put it. I love this picture. There's mother starting her nursing career. Betty and her sister Sharon have joined in the pending civil lawsuit because, like the other families, she believes her mother died from neglect and abuse at the nursing home. And like the other families, Betty documented her mother's suffering. Again, the photos are disturbing. Toenails ripped off? Yeah. They said, well, she bumped into something. How can you bump into something? How can she bump into something when she can't propel? Cuts to legs, open sores. I have no idea how they occurred. They said they didn't know, but there was two or three open sores. Bruises on face, arms, bottom legs. She had bruises on her hands, on her face, on her legs. Again, there's no explanation. And you talked to them about changing her diaper. Oh, yes. More frequently, and nothing changed. Nothing changed. We, uh, we offered to buy more diapers. But in the end, Betty says what killed her mother is even more shocking, malnutrition. She'll never forget the night the ambulance took her mom to the hospital. And what was the diagnosis? What, what did they say was wrong with her? Starvation. They said she was so far along into starvation that even when they started uh, a GI tube into her tummy, feeding tube, they didn't know if they could do the drip slow enough that her body would accept it. How's it possible? 
How is it that possible? she was starving? I don't know. Diagnosed with malnutrition, she was starving. There was no more fight in her. No more fight in her. The fight was gone. I'm sure you were devastated. Oh, yes. Were you angry? I'm still angry. No one, no one, no one deserves to die like that. I think it's criminal that these places are getting away with this. Families are speaking out about the suffering they witnessed in these for-profit nursing homes, but they aren't the only ones who say there is something terribly wrong. This personal support worker agreed to talk to us if we didn't identify her. She works in a Siena home and says she would lose her job. It's hard. My home is a very difficult home to work in. We are short-staffed continuously, all shifts. It is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking why? They go without. The patients go with them. Mm -hmm. Without what? Without, they don't have enough care. They don't have enough compassion. They don't have enough time spent with them. Is that because there's a lack of staff or a lack of will on the part of the staff? I think it's both. The workload and the demand that is put on one person on any PSW in my home is crazy. What do they expect of you? All your people up for breakfast, all your people up for lunch, all showers done, all programs done, all books done, all care done. And are you able to get all that done? Never. So your patients aren't getting the kind of care they should be getting? No. The caregiver says staff complain to management all the time, but nothing is done. It's shameful. I don't think there's a need for it to be happening. It could be prevented. There are a lot of people that I get up in the morning first saying that I'm very lucky if I get to change them by the end of the day. So what these families are telling us is the way it is. That's the reality of the situation. Absolutely. Homes cutting back on staff, cutting back on care. Homes that are supposed to be inspected by the Ministry of Health and long-term care. Let me ask you this. Does the ministry ever show up? They do. They do. But there's an appointment. People know, the staff knows when they're coming. I've always been told that they're coming, they're going to be here on Wednesday, they're going to be here on Tuesday. And then what happens? Does everybody dress up the, the place to make it look pretty and All acceptable? of our managers come out and all of our DOCs and administrators are on the floor and they help. Kitchen come out of nowhere and they help. They help feed, they help answer call bells, they help um, make beds. They're on the floor and they're present. So it's a false picture of Absolutely. the real situation. Absolutely. So what do these profitable nursing homes have to say? Person-centered care is at the heart of what we do. While in their online promotions and advertising pitches, they paint a rosy picture of caring, compassionate homes dedicated to the safety and well-being of seniors. Welcome to a new beginning. A picture the family's planning to sue them, decry as a facade. W5 contacted all three chains, Extendicare, Rivera, Siena, for interviews about the pending lawsuit. All three declined our request to talk, sending statements instead defending their quality of care, saying there is no merit to the lawsuit or the damages sought. Rivera stated, we are committed to providing a safe, caring, and supportive environment in which all our residents are treated with dignity and respect. We will deal with any further actions presented to us at the appropriate time. Extendicare wrote, We care about the people and families we serve, and our staff work to provide them with comfort, care, and compassion when it is most needed. We do not believe that the lawsuit or the damages sought in it have merit and are vigorously defending ourselves against the claim. Sienna wrote, We maintain that the claim does not have merit and we continue to vigorously defend it through the appropriate court process. Obviously, every single person's case is different. Lawyer Manny Oakley represents the families suing the long-term care conglomerates. These homes are for-profit homes. Clearly, when you have uh, the stories that we've heard of people begging for better care for their parents, that's not working. 
So what I'm looking to do is hit them where they actually care, and that's shareholder profit, uh, profitability, um, and if, making money on this. The management team is all making in the millions. Their targets that they have to meet in order to uh, make bonuses have nothing to do with patient care. It was all about acquiring real estate, maximizing shareholder profit. W5 wanted to find out how much money these big care chains make and how they spend it. We asked forensic accountant Al Rosen to help. He poured over financial documents, the fine print in annual reports. How easy is it to get information on these big companies? Well, it's not easy because you have to go to different sources to look at what their dividends are, what the salaries are, the bonuses, the shares, extras. But Rosen says judging by what they pay their top executives, these chains are making money. In 2017, Extendicare paid its president and CEO, Tim Lukenda, just under $4 million, and it paid out more than $37 million in dividends. That same year, Sienna paid its CEO, Lois Cormack, a little over $1.2 million and paid out $36 million in dividends. So they're making money, but how much is going back into running the homes, paying staff, providing care for patients? According to Rosen, the fine print is not much help. Well, you can see what the totals are, but it's a lump sum figure. And on that basis, you don't know how much is food, how much is nursing salaries, and things of that nature. So the actual breakdown, you have no way of knowing? No. My dad was admitted. But the families joined in the pending lawsuit say these hugely successful nursing homes cut corners at every turn when it comes to patient care. It tells me that there's not enough oversight in terms of the meals and the treatment of patients and that has to come from government and people properly qualified. And if you don't have the supervision by an independent source, you've got all sorts of problems. Betty McTague and the 200 families want change and accountability. What do you hope will come out of this lawsuit? Ideally, I would hope that no patient ever goes through this thing again. We are an aging population, which makes it even more scary. Is it about the money for you at all? Do you want compensation for your loss? That isn't why I've, I've done this at all. Quality of life. Everybody deserves quality of life. No one deserves to die like that. Frances York feels the same way. She still walks by the extended care nursing home where her mother spent her last days. Like the more than 200 families who have now signed up for the lawsuit, she is determined to see it through. Why did you join that group? To make a difference. Because one day I may have to be in that situation. Or when I'm gone, maybe my children one day will have to be in that situation. So someone has to stop and change it. What if nothing comes out of it? I can't imagine that nothing will come out of it. I think too many people now are grouping together. There's strength in numbers. Well, it's not the first time one of those three companies, Extendicare, has faced significant legal challenges. In the United States, it paid $38 million to settle a U.S. Justice Department claim of substandard care. And it has moved out of the United States since then. Here's what's straight ahead. A young life turned upside down. I was pretty horrified. And the fight to stay a family. I'm not her father, but I'm 100% her father. When W5 continues.